Section 3, Application Over Existing Tar and Gravel Roofing. To find out what we need to buy, measure the roof to determine the number of square feet. Convert square feet into roofing squares by dividing by 100. If your job is 17,000 square feet, that would be 170 squares. Multiply 170 times 1.5. That equals 255 gallons of primer. Multiply 170 times 12. That equals 2,040 gallons of non-fibered, water-based clay emulsion. Multiply 170 times 7. That equals 1,190 gallons of acrylic base. Multiply 170 times 4. That equals 680 gallons of acrylic white. And finally, we'll need 170 squares of polyester fabric. Remove all the loose gravel and residual dirt. Usually a vacuum truck is the way to go, since they even haul the gravel away. Be sure to remove all the dust and dirt. Sometimes power washing is necessary. Stir the barrel of primer with a broom handle or stick. It is extremely important that the primer is thoroughly agitated. Mask off anything with this queen that you don't want overspray on, including walls, skylights, vents, etc. Use a 3100s tip and spray the primer at a thin even rate over the roof at 1.5 gallons per 100 square feet. Usually an extra man is needed to move the hose for the spray man, since a 55 gallon barrel of primer is applied in about 20 minutes. Wipe any new metal flashing or nosings with vinegar. Allow 24 hours drying time. Locating blisters and splits on the roof. After the primer is dried, three-course any deficiencies on the roof, such as blisters and splits. Cut open the blister with an X-cut and allow to dry out. Surface blisters may be cut out and covered generously with Metacrylics gel or nailed and three-coursed with gel and polyester fabric. Fill splits with Metacrylics gel or an appropriate filler and three-course with gel and polyester fabric. Smaller splits can be taped and three-coursed. Clay emulsion application. Apply a thin quarter inch layer of water over the drum of clay emulsion before spraying. This prevents the clay emulsion from skinning over and following the pump. The clay emulsion must be water-based and non-fibrated for easier spraying. Using a 6100s tip, apply a heavy layer of emulsion at 12 gallons per 100 square feet. Because the size of gravel can vary dramatically from one roof to another, the amount of clay emulsion used will vary from 0 to 15 gallons per square. Apply enough clay emulsion to prevent tinting of the polyester. That's where a gravel rock sticks up and tents the polyester fabric. We don't want that. Use a squeegee if needed to distribute the clay emulsion evenly. Allow three to four days for drying time. Reapply more clay emulsion if the surface is not smooth. Otherwise, you may use an excessive amount of the acrylic base. If the temperatures are too warm, the clay emulsion may become too tacky to walk on. This is easily solved by doing the job early in the morning or in the evening. Or, you can mix one gallon of Metacrylics acrylic white with one gallon of water and using a 3100s tip, apply a very smooth, even light coat over the emulsion. You'll be able to walk on it in about 30 minutes. Applying the base in polyester. Apply a thin one quarter inch layer of water over the drum of base before spraying. This prevents the base from skinning over and following the pump. Using a 6100 spray tip, apply the acrylic base at the rate of five gallons per 100 square feet. When starting the roll, don't do more than two or three feet, so you, you can easily start the roll without having to step in the wet base. Be sure that you keep a straight line to start. Make sure a heavy coat is applied or white holidays will appear in the polyester. Immediately broom the polyester into the base, pressing hard on the broom. Emphasis is on the edges of the polyester. 
When wrinkles occur, immediately stop and remove them manually by pulling on the polyester fabric or using a broom to slide them out. Don't go faster than your broom man on hot days, or the wet base will skin over before the polyester is pressed down. If this happens, stop and cut the polyester, apply more base, overlap the polyester by three inches, and continue. When the end of the run is reached, cut the polyester with the scissors, being careful to stay about one inch from the gutter, parapet, nosing, or gravel stop. These will be overlapped later with the gel and polyester. Spray a cover coat of base at two gallons per 100 square feet over the polyester or until the product starts to dimple. Again, apply two to three feet when starting a new run. Use a three inch red lap line on the adjacent run to line up the new run. Be sure the broom man presses down hard on the side laps. When taking breaks on the roof, put the brooms in the shade and clean the spray tip. Hot days may require putting the brooms and spray wand in a tub of water. Be careful to keep the three inch overlap throughout. You may have to wipe your finger over the adjacent polyester to see the red line. Cut the polyester fabric prior to application of the base around penetrations, otherwise it's very messy. Allow approximately one inch around all penetrations. When going under HVAC, the fabric should be pre-cut to the proper size. A wire or stick is used to move the polyester under the HVAC. If there is not enough clearance, then turn the HVAC power off. Observe any connected pipes. If the unit can be raised without tweaking the pipes, then carefully raise it up a couple of inches to allow installation of the fabric. If pipes need to be disconnected to raise the unit, call the HVAC maintenance technician to do the job, unless you're a qualified professional. Allow 24 to 48 hours curing time or until dry enough to walk on. Applying the three-course gel and polyester. Knee pads can be very useful on a warm day when three-coursing because the acrylic base is a dark gray and gets very hot when kneeling on it. A piece of carpet to kneel on will work also. Apply the gel in a smooth, thin quarter-inch layer with a rubber glove. Immediately, roll out the polyester and press it down with the rubber glove. Apply a thin, smooth quarter-inch layer of gel over the polyester with the side of your hand. A paintbrush can be used to smooth over the gel for appearances. This must be done while the gel is still wet. Allow 24 hours cure time. Applying the first top coat. Apply a thin quarter inch layer of water over the drum of top coat before spraying. This prevents the top coat from skinning over during application. Use a 3900 spray tip or larger to apply the white or color top coat. Apply the top coat at two gallons per 100 square feet. You'll know you have the correct amount when the wet top coat starts to dimple. Colder temperatures may require using a gray or beige top coat as you see in this picture. To ensure faster curing, the white can cure very slowly if little or no sunlight are present and if temperatures are in the 20 to 40 degree range. This job was scheduled to get white, but low temperatures and intermittent rain encouraged us to use the light gray instead. Allow 24 hours cure time. Applying the final top coat. Apply a thin quarter inch layer of water over the drum of top coat before spraying. Apply the top coat at two gallons per 100 square feet. Notice again that the correct amount is applied when the top coat begins to dimple. Allow 24 hours cure time. During the curing of the roof, some tobacco-like stains may be noticed coming from the roof after a night of dew. This is a water-based surfactant that is easily washed off with water. Plan on recoating the roof in 10 to 20 years. Normally warm climate zones such as the Mojave Desert require recoating sooner than cold climate areas. It's a good idea to clean your roof off annually with soapy water. Clean and check all drains and gutters for obstructions. Repair any deficiencies with gel and polyester and be sure to use the primer first. Call or write us for the request for warranty form for your 10-year warranty.